let's look at some examples of applying this idea of marginal analysis and then focus on interpreting those results. So in our second example, we have the revenue from the sale of x items is given by the function r of x equals 64x minus, and let's make a correction here, that should be 0.02x squared. The first thing that we want to do is find r prime of x. So again, we could plug that function into Wolfram Alpha to calculate the derivative, and our result would be 64 minus 0.04x. So this is r prime of x, our marginal revenue function. In part b, we want to find the revenue and the instantaneous rate of change of revenue at a production level of 1,244 car seats and interpret the results. So when we're told to find the revenue, that means we want to go back to the original revenue function and evaluate at a production level of 1,244. And when we're told to find the instantaneous rate of change of the revenue, that means we want to go back and evaluate the marginal revenue function at that exact same production level. So using a graphing calculator, Wolfram Alpha, we could plug in each of those functions and evaluate it for our given number here we would get r of 1,244. So again, that original revenue function evaluated for this number would give us a result of 48,665. Then we could evaluate the marginal revenue function to find the instantaneous rate of change of revenue, which in this case would be 14. So since we ended up with a positive result, because our marginal revenue is something greater than zero, we know that our function value is increasing. So to interpret this, we could say that at a production level, of 1,244 items, our total revenue is currently 48,000, $665 and is increasing and again we would say increasing because our marginal revenue function evaluated at this production level is positive so our revenue is increasing at a rate of $14 per item So every time we increase production by one unit, our revenue will increase by approximately $14. In example three, we're told that the demand for a certain item is given by this function d of p, where p represents the price of the item in dollars. First thing we want to do is find the rate of change of demand with respect to price. So that again is just another way of saying we want to find the marginal demand function or the derivative of that demand function, which in this case would be negative 10p minus 8. Then we want to evaluate d prime of 15 or that marginal demand function evaluated at x equals 15, which in this case would give us a result of negative 158. So in this case we have a negative result and we want to provide an interpretation for that result. This would tell us that when the price is $15, which is the value that we plugged in for P in our marginal demand function, demand is decreasing in this case since the result from our derivative function was negative. We can say that demand is decreasing at a rate of about 158 items for each $1 increase in price.
So again, the same idea as before. If our current price is $15, if we increase that by $1, then our demand will decrease by approximately 158 units, since in this case that marginal result came up as a negative value.